Hello and welcome to Moment of Truth on Labour Social. I'm Graham Hughes. Now, contrary to what you've been told about this week's Tory party conference in Manchester, it is actually filled to the rafters. Not with people, obviously, because who would want to associate themselves with this screaming monkey clown car on fire as it goes off a cliff? No, it's filled with something else. Lies. The porkiest pies you've ever heard, emanating from the clanging manholes of some of the most vile public school fash we've ever had the misfortune of sharing a planet with. Here's a top 10 of the most disingenuous lies so far as things stand at 8pm on Tuesday. The way things are going, I might need to do another list tomorrow. At number 10, we've got Greg Hands claiming that Labour under Starmer flip-flops on policy. A more nuanced reading of the situation is that Labour have been forced to dial back on some of their ambition as a direct result of the Tories well and truly bankrupting the nation financially and morally. Also, a bit rich coming from the party that under Sunak has U-turned on oil licences, their stance on 20 mile an hour zones, their support of ULES, the 2030 ban on petrol and diesel new car sales, they've U-turned on house building targets, they've U-turned on Rules concerning much-needed insulation in houses. They have U-turned on the overturning of more than 4,000 EU laws for some reason. Mostly because it was a stupid idea in the first place. U-turned, they have U-turned on the Rwanda scheme. They have U-turned on the idea of putting migrants on empty cruise ships. Sunak himself U-turned on attending COP27, which he said he wasn't going to do, but then did. And then he did a double U-turn on onshore wind farms, saying he wouldn't relax the ban then pledging to relax the ban, and then U-turning on that pledge. Of course, this is without referring to the biggest U-turn of them all, the scrapping of the Manchester to Birmingham leg of HS2 after 13 years of us being told by the Tories it was definitely going ahead. It's almost like they are a bunch of massive liars. At number nine on our list, of lies, we've got another pop at Labour, this time a completely made-up policy to tax meat that Net Zero Secretary Claire Coutinho thought she'll declare was an actual thing when it's not to the four or five people sitting listening to her speech before backtracking a little when tackled on it by Sky News's Sophie Ridge. I tell you what though, when your political party has to literally make stuff up about the opposition to criticise... The writing is on the wall. A a view shared by thousands of Tory voters who thought they'd give this convention, the last before a general election, a hard miss. But them Tory MPs are not done with making shit up about Labour. Because at number eight, we have James Cleverly strongly implying that Labour will give the Falklands back to Argentina. Can Labour sue? He's not in Parliament saying this. I I think they can sue. I I think they should definitely sue. At number seven, not the lie about the seven bins that that Labour apparently wants to squeeze into our kitchens for some reason, but the lie that 15-minute cities are somehow tyrannical. A A lie trotted out by, of all people, Transport Secretary Mark Harper. This is an extension of the lie at number six, the completely made up war on motorists, which includes the 20 mile an hour speed limit in Wales, which was an idea put forward by the Tories in Wales and voted on by the majority of Tories in the Senate, with only one bothering to vote against it. But yeah, it's totally a Labour thing, right? Right, right. At number five, we have Priti Patel talking about GB News, calling it the most successful, most dynamic, no-nonsense news station and the defenders of free speech. This is despite the station being wildly biased towards the Conservatives and and under investigation for multiple potential breaches of the Broadcasting Code by Ofcom. At number four, we have the lie told by Corolla Braverman that multiculturalism has failed. As a particularly dim and vicious child of Indo-African immigrants, She's done remarkably well out of the British multicultural out of British multiculturalism. But hey ho, she said this last week, but it's been repeated by Leanderthal. Because why tell why why bother telling a lie if it's not going to be repeated at conference by the world's most stupid and obnoxious man? At number three, we have Peaky Pop 
or Beaky Pub even, aka Michael Gove, saying that Brexit has been delivered. And there is now more than 350 million extra a week for the NHS. What's the inflation rate again? 6.7%? How many people are currently on waiting lists for the NHS? What was it 7.68 million? Yeah, okay, I'll just leave it at that. And number two on this dispiriting list of bullshittery, we've got swivel-eyed loon Danny Kruger MP saying there's going to be a one-world government that's going to tell us all what to do. That is unless the Tories are in power to stand up to them. Just like they stood up to those Russian Tory party donors, the oil giants, big tobacco, big pharma, Saudi Arabia, the USA, China, India, Australia, etc. I don't think... Being on your knees counts as standing. But what do I know? And at number one, we have possibly the most disgusting lie told at the Tory party conference so far. And that dubious accolade goes to the disgusting Enoch Powell fangirl and Tory candidate to be London mayor, Susan Hall, who declared that Sadiq Khan frightens Jews because... reasons... The Board of Deputies of British Jews quickly issued a statement praising Mr. Khan as someone who treated them with respect and friendship. To which Ms. Hall doubled down because, of course, she did, and refused to apologise for her slander, lies, dog whistle racism and general scumbaggery. And that wraps up my list of the most wretched and disappointing fantasies since the last season of Game of Thrones. I'll no doubt be back tomorrow with more. Feel free to add your contribution in the comments below.